When I park that car, I turn around and have a good long stare at it. It's just such a cool car. It doesn't matter what anyone else is driving. At the traffic lights, people are gonna be looking at that car. You feel really special in it. Anyone riding in it feels really special, but you know, everyone that sees it gets a kick out of it too. It brightens other people's days. I mean, that's the, that's the main thing about it. My name's Owen Miller. I'm Scottish, surprisingly enough. We're in Lima, Peru, and I drive a 1973 Eldorado Cadillac convertible. Cars for me were, were not part of my life before. I mean, living in Scotland, they were just, they were just, I didn't even own a car. Came down to South America looking basically for work as a geologist, which I've been doing ever since. Uh, that was uh, when I was 26, I'm now 48. Been here 22 years, four years in Chile, and 18 years here. Well, actually, when I moved here, I bought, bought a 65 Mustang, and it sort of all sort of went from there. I got into a couple of the big GM luxury cars, I had a Buick Riviera, and also a 66 Tornado, and then a buddy of mine said, you know, you need a Cadillac, and it's like, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> Who doesn't? Cadillacs are always big cars. I mean, they're always large. That one, I think, is probably the engine. It's a 500 cubic inch, which is 8.2 liters. I think it's the most popular of the Cadillac range. There was Fleetwoods and there was a bunch of others, Coupe de Ville's, but I think the Eldorado was the sort of the standard model if there's such a thing as a standard Cadillac. You know, from North Americans, it's like, well, you're a bit of a show off and you're a bit of a, you know, if people don't react that way to it here. They, they get a lot of, they get a big kick out of it. They get enjoyment out of it. I mean, if I wanted to show off how much money I had, I'd go and buy a Porsche you know, a Cayenne S Turbo or something. I'd be driving something that really does show money. Whereas that one, people love the car. You spread happiness with it. I mean, you people get a real kick out of seeing it. I like the sort of the 60s and 70s stuff, really. 50s for me doesn't really do it, or earlier. Some people are Mark guys, you know, some people are Mopar, some people are Ford, some people are Chevy. Um, I like the big luxury boats. They're just awesome. The detailing and, the, and all that extra stuff that comes with the with a luxury car that you don't get on, on a stock, you know, like a Camaro or something like that. I mean, they're, they're cool cars. You know, I like the muscle cars, the pony cars, but, you know, the luxury cars for me are what really does it. Pontiac and Ford both had assembly plants here up until the late 60s. They assembled cars here, so you get Peruvian pony cars. Now, I mean, a lot of them have been bought up and sold, and I think a lot of people just kind of just like less interested in, in classic cars now. I mean, you used to see a lot more, but people were using them not as a classic car, that was their car. Now they're kind of, they're still there, people still use them. It's a half classic cars, but they're dwindling away. There used to be you could get the cars here. Now it's very difficult to find anything that's in good condition. You're better just bringing something in. And that's what I did with it. I mean, the, there was no Cadillacs here. I imported that one. I got a friend of mine and he's up in California. He hunted around for about six months. And we hunted around and found the one that was the best balance for your price and condition. And this, that one came from San Francisco. We haven't touched the exterior at all or the engine. We did basic mechanics, put electronic ignition in it. We got the roof mechanism fixed, gonna because if it busted down here, nobody's gonna fix it. So we had like the guy in California who does Cadillac roof mechanisms fix all that up. And then that was pretty much it. Yeah, suspension, you know, bushings, all that sort of stuff, just steering. But everything else is stock. Unfortunately, Peruvian Customs is set up that you're not allowed to bring in used parts. I mean, you can't find new parts for that car. 
Mustangs and Camars are easy. They're you know you can buy you can buy a whole car in parts. Whereas Cadillacs, spare parts are difficult to get. So you can't get badges for the trunk and other little details. If you lose those, you're not going to get another one, or you pay big money for replacement parts. Yeah, I'm keeping it. I mean, unless, you know, I don't get any serious offers for it, but people do ask me if I'd sell it. I don't want to sell it. I mean, I want to keep that car. I'll be buried in it. <laughs> I like, I use it on Sundays when it's quiet. I occasionally take it on runs down the beach. Sunday afternoons, going off for lunch somewhere, pick up some friends, or maybe on a night out. It's cool to take it out somewhere. Face is free outside the apartment, get the hose out, I'll wash that car myself. I quite like that zen thing of you know doing a bit of manual labour and washing the car. Probably go and uh, pick up a couple of friends and just head off, go and grab some lunch somewhere. Ideally, um, do a maybe a bit of cruise around town along the Malik on there. And there's some good seafood restaurants there. You know, go and grab lunch, and then head off and try and find somewhere where you can have a cup of coffee and, and appreciate the car, actually. If I can park up where I can see the car and see people's reactions to it, that's, that's pretty cool. It makes, it makes other people laugh. It brightens other people's days. I think that's the, that's the main thing about it. Mm -hmm.